Bell Show on the network. We are back live. We are coast to coast, border to border on iHeartRadio today. Also, AMFM247.com. Tune in, iTunes. Of course, you can find everything. Podcast videos, the whole nine yards at our incredible website, J I G G Y J G U A R dot com. Coming soon, we're going to have an updated app. Basically, I just have to uh, get off my tuchus, as they say, and uh, get a hold of our app guy and say, hey, uh, this is awesome. Publish it to the App Store. That's it. That's all I've got to do. And I'm just extremely lazy as everyone knows. So we are going to go to our next guest. We've got our next guest joining us here on our big broadcast, Coast to Coast and Border to Border on iHeartRadio Today and, of course, AMFM247.com. Joe Dallas is with us today. He is absolutely amazing. We are going to be talking about undercover child predator stings. We're going to be talking about how they lead to arrests of several Disney employees, which... Good Lord, does it ever end? Uh, Joe, how are you, sir? Doing well, thank you, James. Thank you for having me. Now, this is... <laughs> this this whole story is like... You know, I, I, a, a child could, literally could write this story of sexual predators <laughs> being caught at Disney. This is just amazing. Tell me a little bit about... What has happened here with this undercover child predator uh, sting? What's going on with this? Well, at this, at this point, James, the information is very sketchy. We only know that there was an undercover child molestation sting yeah. and that at least three Disney employees were caught up in it. And, of course, any form of child abuse is a horrible thing. Yes. It becomes especially newsworthy if some of the figures involved are identified with industries that specifically target children. So it's especially chilling to think of Disney employees who represent what has traditionally been considered a very family-friendly organization uh, to have been involved in such a thing. Joe Dallas with us today. He joins us live here on our big program. And uh, Joe is absolutely amazing. We are going to be uh, chatting here today about this case. Uh, it, it is just just unfathomable that, uh, you know, that this stuff continues to happen. Some of those arrested in this recent undercover child predator sting were Disney employees. Um, I know for years, everybody has been talking about the fact that you know, some that Hollywood is is full of <laughs> full of child predators, and people that are working in that that area are uh, are child predators. Uh, do you feel the entertainment industry beyond just Disney bears any responsibility for any of this behavior, my friend? You know, I think that it does, James. Um, at least indirectly, possibly directly, the entertainment industry has been sexualizing kids for quite a while. Yes. There are countless films featuring sex between and among teenagers. Uh, there have been films recently in the last few years that have even shown um, relationships between adults and minors in a very positive way. And uh, I think, by and large, it's hypocritical to so eroticize minors and then turn around and say, oh, but of course we're against the sexual abuse of minors. When you sexualize people, you're certainly setting them up uh, to be sexually desired and possibly sexually abused. So yeah, I, I'd have to say that, yes, I think that uh, the entertainment industry does need to bear some responsibility for this. Joe Dowell's with us today. He joins us live here on our big broadcast. Uh, it, it is It just must be my imagination but sexual scandals uh seem to be reaching a new fever pitch the attorney general of new york just released findings from this bombshell investigation of governor andrew cuomo's purported sexual harassment and now we have this r-rated g the, this this disney company that that has several employees that are arrested in an underground undercover child predator sting um 
we have got with us today author and uh, pastoral counselor Joe Dallas. He's with us today here on the telephone. Do you feel that identity movements like the LGBTQ and and some of these folks contribute in any way of this exploitation of children? Well, my understanding on the one hand of lesbian and gay and transgender people is that by and large they are vehemently against any yes. exploitation of children. Yes. I'm not about to say and now, by the way, I as a conservative Christian I disagree with these groups on their sexuality. I don't believe God intended homosexuality, and I believe it falls short of God's will. But that said, no, they're not pedophiles, not by any yeah. means. And as I said, most of them would be vehemently against this kind of thing. But uh, when you keep redefining basic relationships like marriage and redefining monogamy and redefining what sexual morality is and isn't, you basically open the door to keep that redefinition going. If marriage is not between a man and a woman, it can now be be between two men or two women. Why can it not be between three people? And if it can be between three people, why can't it be between an adult and a minor who is maybe 17 or maybe 15 or maybe 12? There are already voices within uh, psychiatric circles who have said on record that they did not feel pedophilia was always damaging. They're a minority, certainly. But the voices are there. So I think that oftentimes groups that remove boundaries may not intend to remove other boundaries, but by removing boundaries, they in fact do just that. Just for example, when I was a teenager back in the 60s, the free love movement, which was largely heterosexual, removed the boundaries of monogamy between men and women. They did not intend to redefine normal relations as including homosexuality, but in fact they paved the way for that normalization. So I do believe that the slippery slope argument is relevant here. I do. We have got a great guest with us today. Joe Dallas joins us here on the telephone talking a little bit about this story. Uh, there there seems to be a lot going on nowadays. It, it, it just... <laughs> we just have to continue to just screw things around and mess with people's heads. And uh, the so-called woke or cancel culture movement seem largely supported by young people. I've seen this firsthand with various, <laughs> with various young people that I know. Uh, do you see any correlation between this and the problem of child exploitation? Well, only in the sense that, again, the woke movement, the social justice movement, the cancel culture movement, they are all about overthrowing traditional norms of behavior, including modesty and certainly including sexual morality. And again, the more we blur the lines on those issues, the more we open the doors for more confusion. So if you have, just for example, a generation that celebrates either promiscuity or multiple relationships, what is often called polyamory, if you have a generation that celebrates the idea that you can continually change the gender you identify with, that, that then you basically have a generation promoting the idea that you become your own God, you can speak into reality your own moral structure. And that sets up a moral freefall. So for that reason, yes, I think we have got a great guest with us today. Joe Dallas joins us here on our big program. Uh, you have an incredible book out there, Christians in a Cancel Culture. Talk to me a little bit about this. Joe, can, can, can you still hear us, my friend? Joe, are you still with us? I think we might have lost Joe Dallas. Joe Dallas. Joe, are you still there, my friend? You're... Still says you're on the phone there with us. Joe Dallas. Okay. We are going to 